irrespective of which tax regime you opt for there are some investments that you should not let go of let's find out the important ones welcome to tui wallet talks with the new tax regime becoming the default tax regime should one abandon the so called tax saving investments even ones like ppf and insurance policies Answering these important questions, we have with us Kuldeep Kumar. He is personal tax expert and also former national leader, global mobility practice at PwC India. Hi, sir. Welcome to the show. Hi, Smriti. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, sir. We are discussing a very important topic that with the new tax regime coming in, do tax saving investments lose their sheen? And in that regard, my first question to you is that you know, life insurance policy is actually one of the most common tax saving investment bets that people look at. So, what is your take there? Should one still invest in them? I think one should invest them. And to be very honest with you, you know, when I started my career early '90s, I also bought this policy because there was tax benefit associated with that. Now, I don't know. I I I I don't know. I mean, whether it was the the way the you know the insurance agents sell their product, and that has actually got the grind in our minds that because of the tax we are buying the insurance. But I think otherwise the insurance should be taken because insurance is for the protection of your family. when you know in 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 the happening of the contingency and and we should not forget that uh, actually this in this year budget the finance minister has already put money in your pocket so whether you pay tax on it or do not pay tax on it that doesn't make a difference actually you are already saving the tax on that so i think uh, for take for example you know uh, even if you take atc deduction at you know deep medical insurance or even at tta deduction or even a pension uh, you know uh, nps deduction of an additional 50000 rupees right. you know uh, all this amount will total up something around uh, 2 lakh 35000 or so and if you take 30% of that that will be hardly 65 70000 rupees on the other hand side uh, if somebody who is earning an income of say 50 lakh so from the income bracket from 10 to 15 lakh he is straight away saving 10% on that 1 and 150000 rupees because under the old regime the uh, the 30% bracket kicks on uh, at uh, 10 lakh rupees while under the new regime it is starting at 15 lakh rupees so i think uh, whether tax is there or not insurance should be taken you know keeping in your uh, requirement and whether you take a term insurance or you take a endowment policy so that 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 according to your risk profile according to your uh, you know in consultation with your financial planner you can do that okay okay and what about the ulips what is your take there Uh, the ulip is a good investment, and if you are making investment uh, up to two and a half lakh rupees, the premium paid is two and up to two and a half lakh rupees, then the then the proceed on maturity is not subject to tax, and other it is taxable actually as a capital gain. I mean, if there is a if the premium is exceeding two and a half lakh. On the other hand side, in case where the this year budget which has brought the change, where the insurance premium paid is more than five hundred thousand rupees, in that case the proceed on maturities are taxable. So I think ULIP too, you know, depending on the average income group taxpayer, I can say that they can very much, you know, uh, invest in the ULIP. Okay, okay, but what about ELSS? Well, ELSS also, you know, uh, as an equilibrium scheme, you know, and I think in some of the scheme has actually given a better return than some of the other mutual fund schemes in the past. So yeah. I think, you know, again, I will go back to my, you know, the first question when I was saying that. because even if you are getting the tax benefit that tax saving finance minister has already given to you hmm. so i think with this regarding that now it depends at which scheme you want to want to invest but i think if the tax benefit is not there whether you want to invest in elss or whether you want to choose any other any other mutual fund scheme which may be more beneficial to you so i think you are getting more uh, flexibility as a uh, as an individual on that so 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 to to my mind I think if ELS is a better than the other mutual fund, irrespective of the tax, tax irrespective of the tax benefit, that may still be a better option. Okay, okay. But what about the traditional options like you know, public provident fund or NSC? Some of those uh, they have attractive interest rates. So, do you think it may still make sense for me to opt for them because they are relatively risk free, and then there are triple E options? So, uh, I think some of the other other scheme which which are there like the NSC or a PPF or a um uh, kisan patar etc i think it all depends on your risk profile and how you diversify your portfolio these are very, very small saving scheme and i think putting some money is good way because you know when this money is not in front of you you actually will end up saving a lot and the, also get the benefit of compounding out of that 
so 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 again it depends you know you can consult your invest uh, your financial planner and uh, in these schemes may be you know a certain portion you can definitely allocate to this scheme to save to save your uh, money okay okay but the very important one in, in today's context so much so about medical insurance here do you think that it makes sense for me to opt for medical insurance even if for example my employer is already providing that for my family and for me yeah that is very that is a very interesting question and uh, generally you know when someone is covered by the employer and under the group insurance scheme and then they think that actually they don't need the uh, their own personal insurance but one should remember that you know if you buy your own insurance there are certain diseases like pre existing diseases are not covered but there are certain diseases which get covered only after a cooling cough period of 2 years right. so please have a look at your family history look at you know your family structure like your parents whether dependent on you whether they have the insurance or they don't have the insurance i think whether not having the insurance and then then you also says that ki what is your job i mean uh, how much of certainty is there in a present time when there's so much of the uncertainty is uh, biting and uh, then what is the prospect that ki you know if you lose your job as how quickly you can get your another job i think considering all those factors one may actually consider that they should parallelly think about this medical insurance aspect as well and why and they should take their own policy and uh, the other advantage is that you know if you start early and if you are not claim making any claim you also get discount on that and now in the market there are quite a bit of uh, various products which are available which can be suiting your uh, you know your, according to your needs so one should definitely you know look at their own medical insurance as well at some point of time they may actually benefit from that